Well, well, well. They say that the playoffs will expose you, especially the finals. And um, we, we've been we've been enlightened to a few. What's the word I'm looking for? Occurrences, I guess, or enlightenments. I don't know. I don't know what you want to call it. But we, this, this something showed itself in Game Three, and not everybody's gonna see it right away. But I definitely, definitely, definitely picked up on it. If you're a, if you're a Mavericks fan, you might probably want to take your AirPods out your ear. And close up the app, whatever you're watching on YouTube, shut it off, and go about your day. Cause I'm about to say some things you're not gonna want to hear. Um, I'm gonna start with Kyrie. Kyrie had his best game of the finals. Maybe one of, obviously one of his better games of the of the playoffs. Kyrie's lost a step. Um, and it's it's. It, it's natural. You can't expect them to be the same Kyrie from eight years ago. The Kyrie from eight years ago, 2016 finals, 2016 playoffs. He could have he could have dropped 50 on Boston, but you know players get older, they lose a step, so it's only natural. So I'm not knocking them. I know when I say when I point out things, people you know take it to heart, get they pet they 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 panties in a bunch. But well, there's no need for all of that. Kyrie's been in the league a long time. He's a generational talent, probably the greatest handlers of all time, one of the greatest finishers through traffic, one of the greatest finishers at the rim with either hand of all time. I'm not knocking him. I'm just pointing out what I'm seeing. He had one of his best games, and it still did nothing. They still got smoked. The Kyrie that we all know, the, the Kyrie that he used to be when he was younger could have dropped 50. Easy. We know that. We all know that. So that's that about Kyrie. I'm not knocking him. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. <sighs> now we got to go to Mr. Luca, the guy that I gave the highest praise for coming into this finals because of what he's done in the, because what, what he's done in the playoff with the team that he has. That team is not great. That team is barely good. Your third and fourth best players are P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford, maybe. And um, that's saying, that's very telling. Luka happened to drag that team to the finals. He gets a lot of credit for that. Luka is an exceptional offensive scorer and playmaker. Makes a lot of, he makes, he makes the team better offensively. offensively. We know that. Great. What's happening right now in the finals, especially in game three? The reason he's fouling so much on defense is because he's tired. It's because he's doing so much on offense, he has no more energy. He's pretty much cooked. He's pretty much done. Um, can he? On top of that, he's injured, but he's more tired than injured. That's 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 causing the troubles that we could see on the court. And that's that's that that's what's the word I'm looking for. I mean, you you can't you can't penalize somebody for being tired. You just have to you know get in better shape for the next seasons to come. Find a way to get in better shape. All of the greats did it. All of the greats had to do something with their body over you know over the summer to get themselves right. You know, even LeBron did it at one point. He had to, you know, restructure his workouts and his eating, so he he so he can so he can last through the 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 long season. So it's something Luca's got to figure out and work on. But he was a- absolutely abysmal in Game Three. We all saw it, and we all saw that he, he was he was he was cooked. He had no legs, and that's why he kept fouling on defense. Um, Dallas is like I said last video. Dallas is done. It's inevitable. They're raising the banners on in Game Four, even though they're going to be in Dallas. They're going to be raising the banners in in Boston because Boston is a dynamic team. You got five guys on a string, and even when Peyton Pritchard comes into the game, he still plays within 
with he he still plays within the team throughout the game flow. So they don't really miss a beat when Peyton Pritchard comes out on the court. And there's really nothing you can do about that. This this team, like during the regular season, I thought about it, but I never said it aloud because I know most people won't get it. This team reminds me of the 96 Bulls. Obviously, they're a better three-point shooting team. They're they're, They're both tremendous defensive teams. But the 96 Bulls, those guys, those were six guys on a string. Harper, Pippen, Jordan, Rodman, Longley, Kukos off the bench. Those guys, they were always in the correct spots, offensively, defensively. And then when they put in Kukos for Longley, that was their death lineup. There was nothing you could do about that. Horford, Holiday, White, Tatum, Brown, that's a death lineup. They're unstoppable. They're, when they have a bad shooting night, they still beat you. Their defense is impeccable. They all shoot threes. They're all unselfish. And that brings us to the next to the next thing that I want to talk about. You know, I've been high on Jalen Brown for years. And um, Jason Tatum has been spectacular. But... Just missing something. Oh, we just missing something. We all talk about it. Now we're seeing Jalen Brown close these games. We're seeing Jalen Brown be crowned Eastern Conference Finals um, MVP. We've seen him close game game three last night. I know there's a lot of Jason Tatum fans out there, and I'm so sorry that I got to break the news to you after Game Three. Cause I was gonna wait till I was gonna wait till the finals were over, but every game is becoming more clear and clear to me. And I'm so sorry that I got to do this to you and burst your bubble. But um, it's looking it's looking more like Jalen Brown's team right now, and before you. You know, before you, you know, lose your lunch, let me just say this. It's not all about scoring 30 points a night. I'm talking about as a vocal leader, as an emotional leader, and as the guy that looks at his teammates when the game is close, under two minutes, and he tells them, and he waves them off and tells them, I got it. I got you. That's what Jalen Brown does. That's what I'm seeing. Tatum had an excellent first half. We know it. I've seen it. We all, we were all there. We all watched it. But Jalen Brown closed that game. Jalen Brown told his team, I got you. We're not losing tonight. That's what I saw. I know some people don't want to accept it, but we're here now. And the cherry on top is going to actually be when um, Jalen Brown gets awarded finals MVP. That's probably going to be the, the 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 icing on the cake, but I, I I'm seeing it, and I'm not knocking Tatum. I know people think I'm knocking Tatum. I had somebody send me a message talking about my rhetoric. That's what he said. My rhetoric, my rhetoric on Tatum is laughable. Listen, my man, your mother's rhetoric on Tatum is laughable. What's so laughable? And then. Throughout his whole essay that he sent to me, the only other thing he could tell me is that Tatum had a block on LeBron. I guess that was a clutch play or something. So your whole paragraph, your whole essay, to prove your point, you you told me about one time when Tatum did something in the clutch. Okay, you got it. You got it, my guy. Listen, it's nothing personal. It's just business. Jalen Brown had has had more clutch plays for the Celtics than Jason Tatum. You you can't go back into the history books and change it. You can't you can't manipulate time. 
This ain't this ain't Marvel. This ain't the Avengers. This ain't the comic books. It is what it is. Tatum is highly accoladed, highly talented, highly gifted, top ten player. Yes, he is. Jalen Brown got a lot better. Jalen Brown's an immaculate two way player. Jalen Brown has taken his team by the horns and putting them on his on his, on his shoulders on his back in the crunch time. We've seen it. I still haven't said Jalen Brown is better than Tatum. I've never said that. I'm just saying this is Jalen Brown's team now, and he's gotten a lot better. And they're both exceptional. Jason Kidd said Jalen Brown was the best player on his team. They asked Drew Holiday, what you think about that comment? Drew Holiday said he's right. What you want from me? What, what did I do? I'm telling you what I'm seeing. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing personal. I don't got no dogs in this race. I don't root for no teams. I don't care who wins. All I care about is that when I pick a fan, fantasy player at night, they perform and win me money. That's all I care about. But in the process, I'm telling you what I'm seeing when I'm watching. That's all. That's all I'm doing. Nothing personal. Just business. You feel me? <sighs> Jason Tatum was shaky in game two. That bothers me. You know why that bothers me? Because people want to advocate for him that he's so much better than Jalen Brown. But your best player can't be shaky. Especially when you're in the in the in the in the league that long. I'm not talking about missing shots. I'm talking about being unsure of your shots, being un unsure of yourself. That's what I'm talking about. Because we all seen it. If you didn't see it, go back and watch game two. Listen, I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. You see what I'm saying? And one more thing before we get into this lineup. I understand that everybody's not gonna agree. That's fine. I don't care. I don't care what you think. As long as you, you know, tell me in a, in a calm, proper manner, I don't care what you say. I know there's people that hate Jalen Brown. We got pe I, we got, we got, we got great members that hate Jalen Brown, but they say it, you know, that, I'm, I, I love when people don't, I love when people don't agree with me. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. I don't care. We, we can't all think the same. We can't all like the same stuff. We can't all like the same players. We can't. We're not. Uh, we're not going to watch a game at all. You know, gather the same information. You know, we're human beings. But just sometimes some people think that they could type anything on these computers. Then they got to fuck around and get blocked. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't like I said, I don't go to nobody's job. Right. And, and say some dumb shit. I don't bother nobody. See what I'm saying? When I go into the Dunkin' Donuts, I'm nice. When I go into the Burger King, I'm nice. When I go to Target, I'm nice. I'm nice to everybody. You know what I'm saying? And if I have something to say, I say it in a nice way. You could do that too on the internet. If you got something to say, you can say it in a nice way. You know how many people be like, hey, Mr. Chapo, I disagree. However, X, Y, Z, no problem. I love that. You know what I'm saying? But some people be like, oh... I'm la my my rhetoric is laughable, man. Well, we don't got to worry about that anymore. All right, as far as DraftKings goes, we got Mr. Luca up top, and you know what? To be honest with you, I have my lineups built for Game Four early, and I started and Luca. I started getting I started getting nervous with my Luca lineups. Closer to lock, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you always got to remember something. They got to pay off their salary. If, I swear, if you keep that in mind when you're building your lineups, if you keep it in mind that they got to pay off their salaries, you're gonna cash more often than not. So DraftKings was pretty balanced. Whatever FanDuel, I had Luca up top. I think I had Luca, Kyrie, um. Derek White, Horford, and then I had Gafford. Luca was scaring me, and Gafford was scaring me. The reason Gafford was scaring me was because, yeah, even though there was no Porzingis, 
Biggs had a hard time with the Celtics in the regular season. I remember that. And I remember telling you that. So I made another FanDuel lineup with Tatum up top. Tatum, Kyrie, White, Horford, and um, Drew Holiday. So in that lineup, I took a gamble, Fade and Luca. That lineup on FanDuel cashed. It barely cashed. But um Luca this is a big number for Luca. This is remember they gotta pay these off. It's a big number. I do think Luca has a uh a, a, a bounce back game four. I do think he put up he puts up like a, a, a 35, 40 point triple double. I do think he gets there. But if I was you, I'd play multiple lineups. I played one with Luca and I fade him in the other one. Just in case he runs out of gas. Um I'm gonna build you a lineup, but I'm probably gonna fade Luca. Because at the end of the day, you could find players to pay off their salary. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for people that are going to pay off their salaries. Always remember, when you play Luka, you got to take a chance at um with value pieces. How many minutes did um Derrick Jones play last night? You see what I'm saying? He 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 was benched. You got to be careful with that. Gafford could always get benched. If Lively is playing better, he's going to get benched. You see what I'm saying? So it's very tricky with these Luka lineups. Actually, let's make a Luca lineup. But I'm not going to put Luca in the captain spot. Let's go. Let's 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 make a lineup with Derek Lively. Why? Because he seemed to be getting in the groove going up against Boston. 18, 18 minutes, 19 minutes, he finally went up to 30 minutes. Two steals, 13 rebounds, he took six shots. We're not worried about that. We're worried about his playing time, his rebounds, and his blocks and his steals. He got 30 minutes last game. Um, I think he's having, a be- he's having a better series than Gafford. So let's play Lively in the captain spot. Let's pick up Luka. Let's pair him with Luka. Let's get one of the J's, uh, p- particularly the cheaper one, because Tatum hasn't been out. You know, he hasn't been outscoring Jalen Brown fantasy wise like that. I think Jalen Brown actually had more fantasy points than him last game, so it's not a it's not a big um, gap that I need to play. I must play Tatum over Brown. We have six K left. Holiday. For sure. PJ Washington is playing with some confidence, but no Porzingis. I'm going to play Horford. And our last guy in. See, that's a problem. Gafford at 44. I don't, I'd rather find a way to not play Gafford and Lively in the same lineup. Let's take out Drew. Let's put in Washington. Um... I don't want to do all that. Take out. 6K left. Somebody has to come out. 6K left. Let's take out Brown. Let's throw in Kyrie. Still might not work. It does. So you got Lively, Luca, Kyrie. P.J. Washington, Horford, and Drew Holiday. You have no Tatum and you have no Brown. So that's very risky. Um, let's do a Jalen Brown lineup. We do Brown. Let's go to Lively. Let's go Horford. Kyrie. Let's 
Kyrie, Drew, Derek White. Yeah, I really don't. I personally don't want to play Gafford. I don't want to play Derek Jones. I don't want to play. I really don't want to play Sam Hauser because if Sam Hauser takes four shots and he misses all four shots, your lineup is probably cooked. Don't want to play Josh Green. No confidence that he stays on the court long. Pritchard's going to play 12 minutes. Not playing Tillman. So I'm as of now, I'm going to keep my lineup nice and tight. You feel me? All right, before we go to FanDuel, if you're new here, welcome. Appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Hit the bell. Thumbs up the video. If you're making lineups, um, and this is for any sport. You're making lineups and you're struggling to cash. You need help. You want me to send you my lineups? Check out the Patreon link in the description. You can also check out the channel memberships, which have lineups. Or you can, yeah, check out the channel memberships that have lineups. And we also have Super Chats open. All right, let's go to FanDuel. Let's get a lineup and let's go. Let's get out of here. Um... All right, um, 17 5 for Luca. Like I said, I do expect Luca to have a bounce back game. I do. I do expect him to have one last hurrah. They're probably still going to lose the game, but um, I'll go back to Luca. I think what you got out of Kyrie was his best. I think you got his best on game three. Let's pick up Tatum. You got to think somewhere in the back of Tatum's brain, he knows that he's about to lose this, this finals MVP. And I think he tries to have himself a masterclass because as of now, Jalen Brown is the finals MVP. He's going to get it. Um, I think Jason Tatum, and it's a narrative. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to, Incorporated. I think Jason Tatum has a master class because he know what I, I think he knows what's happening. Yes, Jalen Brown getting better is gonna lead him to a, a sweep and a title. But he's a man and he has a a, a, a he a ego like the rest of us. And I think he sees what's happening. I think he has a a, a thirty point fourteen rebound, eight assist game. Two blocks, two steals. I think he has the game of his life because he's sure going to need it if he wants to be finals MVP. Um, we got 8K left. Now now, now things are going to start getting muddy. I think Derek Lively has jumped over Gafford for playing time. I want to play Horford. And 8K, I don't trust Derrick Jones to stay on the court. This is the problem. This is the problem. See what I'm saying? This is where this is where we have a problem. Which one of these bozos can we trust? Sam Hauser, 7K. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. You play Derrick Jones and pray to God that he hit some threes, get some blocks. This is this this is what I want to do. I want to play Luca. I want to play Tatum. Lively seems comfortable. Al Horford is always reliable. That last value piece is gonna make you or break you. Um You just got to pray to God Derrick Jones has a great first quarter. If Derrick Jones have a, has a good first quarter, he stays on the court. If you don't trust Derrick Jones, you got to find one of these other value pieces to trust in. Or you got to you gotta make some pivots. You got to make some hard choices. You got to maybe take out Luka. I think Tatum. I think Tatum has a game of his life. Um... 
I trust Lively more than Gafford. I think Kyrie. I think you got the best out of Kyrie. That's 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 how I'm looking at it. You don't you you don't have to look at it how I look at it, but that's what I'm feeling as of now. Maybe things will change between now and and lock, but this is how I'm feeling. I'm gonna go in and get out of here. I took up more than enough of your time. Um, I know all the Jason Tatum lovers are gonna have a meltdown. Just keep it calm. You feel me? I'm gonna go in and get out of here. We'll find something to eat. Hope you're having a spectacular day. Um. Remember, don't be mad. I'm just a messenger. You know, you feel me? I'm going to go in and get out of here. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, thumbs up. Check out the Patreon linked in the description. Check out the channel memberships. Um, silver and gold give you lineups. Just read the read the details. Super chats are always open. I appreciate each and every one of you. Like, if you can hear my voice, then I wasn't really talking to you. I was talking with you. Because anybody that ever leaves, leaves something for me that I don't appreciate, I get them out of here. So if you could hear, if you could, if you heard this video, I'm not talking to nobody. I'm just talking in general. We having a, a conversation. You see what I'm saying? But like I said, J Jason Tatum lovers don't come from my neck. Kyrie lovers don't come from my neck. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Ciao.